Before we can get into how to price or value a forward contract, let's just briefly talk about what a forward contract is. And I'm going to start with the definition. So a forward contract is an agreement to buy or sell an asset at a few at a certain future time. We'll call that T for the purposes of our calculations for a certain price. And we'll call that F. And let's just talk about this conceptually. So let's say I wanted to buy Nvidia's stock. And right now the price of that stock is $100. I could go out into the market and pay $100 right now to buy that stock. That would be called a spot contract because it happened right on the spot. Compare that to a forward contract where maybe I could go out into the market and find some sort of financial institution that's willing to agree to sell me Nvidia stock six months from today for a price of $105. So we're making a contract between each other that we're going to exchange this share for a certain price of 105 bucks basically six months from today so six months is t this was an over-the-counter contract because we just made a handshake agreement with one another we didn't go through an exchange or anything to make this uh uh this contract and the party that agrees to buy the underlying asset is the long. So I'm the one that wanted to buy the share from the financial institution. So I'm the long. And the party that agrees to sell is the short. So the financial institution that's going to sell me that share is the short. Now, let's talk about how these payoffs may play out at the end of this contract. Down at the bottom here, I've drawn two payoff diagrams. The first one is for the long side of the contract over here on the left. And then this one over here on the right is for the short side of the contract. Now let's just walk through this. So the long payoff is going to be equal to ST, which is going to be the price of the stock, the underlying stock at the time of expiration of this contract up here. So at the end of six months, minus that forward price that we did that we declared up here of 105 and so we'll see that this graph assumes that we're at expiration of this contract and this is the price changing of the underlying stock so what could that price be and on this side of the graph this is our payoff so the graph is at zero when the price of the stock at the time of expiration is equal to the price that we set in our forward contract of 105. So right here would be zero. However, once we get up to, let's say, uh, let's say instead the stock was at like 110 when the contract expired, then right here we would see that we would have a payoff of $5, right? And then so as the stock price rises, we get a greater and greater payoff. So if we're long, we benefit when the price rises. Whereas if we were short, we are harmed when the price rises. So if instead this was actually the stock price was just $100 at the time of expiration, then our payoff would actually be negative $5 and we would lose money as long because the price of the stock was below the forward price that we had priced into the contract. Now the shorts payoff is just the exact opposite of the longs payoff. So one thing to keep in mind with forward contracts is that there is zero sum game. Whatever one party gains, the other party must lose. So the shorts payoff is just F minus ST, which is just a reverse of what we saw for the long payoff. So in the same case, if the price ended up actually being uh, $100, Sorry, uh, so the forward price was 105, and if the price ended up being $100, so we go over here, we say it's $100, their payoff on the short side is actually going to be $5. And so they're going to gain the $5 that the other side of the contract lost when the price was $100. Whereas if this ends up being $110, then they're actually going to 
lose $5 because the short loses when the price of the stock rise. Now, how would we value these payoffs or potential payoffs if the forward contract has not yet expired? How about what if there was three months left until, oh, whoops, three months left until the contract was going to expire? How would we come up with that price discounted back to the present value of today? Well, that's what we're about to go over. So now let's value this contract three months into the future. So at time zero, the initiation of the contract, we said that we were going to purchase one share of NVIDIA stock six months into the future. So over here for with a forward delivery price of 105. So F is 105, right? And let's say that three months have passed since we got into this contract, so now we're here. We're three months into the future, and let's just say that right now, if we wanted to buy one share of NVIDIA stock in the market, it would cost us $110. So we're just gonna say that ST, so the this, this price of the stock right now at little t, is going to be equal to $110. So now how would we value our contract as the long well we can do that using this formula here and there's really two components to this formula so the first component is just the stock price st of 110 here and then the second component is using that forward delivery price of 105 and then discounting it back at the risk free rate for a certain period of time and we can just go back over why we're doing all of that so let's start writing this out so the value is going to be equal to ST of 110 because this is right now the value of this share. And then we need to subtract what we're going to have to pay for that share. But we can't only just subtract what we're going to pay because we're not going to pay it right now. We'd pay it in the future. And there's a time value of money component to this. $105 that we receive three months from now is not technically worth $105 today, right? So to find out how much $105 is worth three months from now, we have to use the risk-free rate. Okay, so we're gonna take that value F, 105, and we're gonna discount it back by multiplying it by one plus R, which is the risk-free rate. For this example, let's just go with uh, 6%. And then how long do we discount it back? Well, we discount it back all the way from when we're going to pay it till now. And that period of time is just three months. It's gonna be negative big T, which is uh, that big T was six months, which is a half of a year. So I'm going by years, so 0.5 half a year, minus little t, which was three months, which is just a quarter of a year or 0.25 of a year. So if we start to simplify that, we get down to 110 minus 105 times 1.06 to the negative 0 0.25. And you can see after we simplified this down, we are just discounting it back by a quarter of a year, which is just this three month period here. And now if we simplify it a bit more, we end up with 110 minus 103.48. So the total value of our contract is that we are actually up $6.52. Now, how much would the value of this contract be to the short position? So the opposite side of the trade. Well, to do that, to find that, all you would have to do is take this expression and this expression and just switch them around. And now we don't really need to do all these calculations, but because this is a zero sum game, like I said earlier, we know that the value to the short position is just the opposite of whatever was the value to the long position. So the short is actually down $6.52. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more content just like it in the future. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.